Hello, hello, and welcome to the Jack and Joe show. Joe Sanson alongside me. We're still in the international break, but club football is back this weekend. Thank goodness for that. As a notorious international break hater, I cannot wait for the real football to return. That being said, I have enjoyed watching a couple of the matches during this break. Uh, we obviously saw Andreas Pereira make his uh, mark in the England-Brazil game to the detriment of England, but that was still a good watch. Um, but we're going to talk about all things Fulham today as we look ahead to our match on Saturday at Bramall Lane and the return of the Premier League. But first, a word from our sponsors. And we want to say a thank you to Green King for sponsoring um, the videos this season. Um, I was in a Green King sport pub the other day, Jack. I was, was having I. a wonderful time. Um, it's becoming a regular occurrence and one that I would like to continue. But we're very grateful for the sponsorship. And we're once again encouraging you to, if you can't get to the football for any reason, get yourself down to the next best place. And Jack, there's a fantastic slate of fixtures this weekend. Obviously, Sheffield United Fulham is not one of them. We're at three o'clock on the Saturday, but there's an array of football to get your teeth stuck into in the pub. Absolutely. I mean, this is a a docket for the ages. Eight games on Saturday, how it really should be, and, and two on the Sunday. Um, I, like you, was also in a Green King pub on Saturday, well, Saturday night. Um, I didn't actually watch any of the England-Brazil game because I just don't I didn't care. I had plans. And uh, as soon as the, the full-time whistle left, when everyone left, so we got a nice table at the Prince of Wales, where I've shared many a good pints with, with a big England game. Uh, they're, they're very good for the World Cup and the Euros, and um, maybe the summer will be there as well, depending. Right, on to the fixtures. Newcastle versus West Ham, which, by the way, for West Ham fans, is an absolute pisser. Um, on 12.30 on TNT on Saturday. Then we've got all the 3 p.m.s that include Sheffield United, Fulham, 5.30 at Midlands Derby, at Villa Park, Aston Villa hosted Wolverhampton Wanderers. And then a late game on a Saturday, Brentford, who are in a whole load of trouble against Manchester United, who might just have an upturn in form, given that win against Liverpool in the Cup a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then and then on Sunday, Easter Sunday, bank holiday weekend, of course, Friday, Friday EFL, full docket, Monday EFL, full docket. You love to see it. Um, Sunday is Liverpool hosting Brighton, massive game in the title race, and then the even bigger game, the the, uh, the, the 4.30 Manchester City hosting Arsenal. Probably the game of the week, 100%. apart from Sheffield United versus Fulham. Oh, definitely. 100%. But Joe, I've just realised we play two games in the next few days. Yeah. Yeah. So Nottingham Forest, we could maybe touch on, but we can't really sink our teeth into it. But by the time we, we speak, perhaps next week, it will be a, more of a reflection on the Nottingham Forest game and the Blades game more for us because it was more recent. So that's worth mentioning. But let's just get into it. You know, we're not going to be sat here for 50 minutes like we were last week. It's it's a simple preview of a big, well, a game against Sheffield United who are rock bottom of the table. And Joe, we we sat in a in a pub um, watching Sheffield United against Arsenal together and basically just laughing for basically like we do here. We just, we just laughed for the whole 90 minutes about how poor Sheffield United were Felt very sorry for their fans. I wasn't laughing at the fans. I was laughing at the, just the way they the team applied themselves. And Arsenal, albeit at the top of the table and, and, and flying, ran them ragged. And I, I sense that we could do something similar-ish at Bramall Lane. I really, really hope so, because it's not just that Arsenal game when I've seen them recently. Defensively, they are all over the place. They actually rallied quite well after the Arsenal game at Bournemouth. That being said, on the balance of play and the chance they created, it should have been another battering, really. It was an improved performance, but they are just unfortunately not at the level required. They remind me defensively of Fulham in 2013-14 or 2018-19, potentially worse, just all over the place, conceding chance after chance. And good teams such as Arsenal can really punish you for that. And I'm hoping that we will do the same. I think that we've done a good job recently, Wolves away aside, of punishing teams when they give us a lot of the ball and a lot of chances. Um, and I do think that if we get the first goal here, it could be um, a big scoreline. And that's what I'm hoping for. Um, that being said, Sheffield United are not relegated yet. They are not mm -hmm. down. They've still got everything to play for. And they'll be targeting games like this, home games against mid-table teams that have not too much to play for, although we still think we've got an outside chance of Europe, of course. Um, Let's face it, this is one of the games they have to be targeting to get three points in. Simple as that. Absolutely. And 
I think they have to go for it. I think that can play into our hands because I love seeing us counter-attack. I thought that some of the goals we scored at Old Trafford, at home to Brighton, um, even some of the chances we created at home to Spurs, I'd almost count the Mooners' goal as almost being on the break in terms of how we won the ball back high up the pitch. Um, I think it's the strongest game plan that we have from an attacking sense. And um, it's a potent potential banana skin because everyone's expecting us to win this game. Sheffield United fans are expecting us to win this game. Mm -hmm. But I'm confident because of what I saw against Tottenham, Jack. And, um, you know, these are two away games coming up now where I would love to be sitting here next week talking about six points. And I don't think it's unrealistic. No, It's greedy. But if we're going to get into that European spot, we do have a chance of it. I think we need to win both of these games. Yeah, if if we if we want to look upwards towards those spaces, then then six points would be ideal. Uh, just a word on Sheffield United. Of course, we watched them lose six 0 to to Arsenal. Then they went two 0 up at the Vitality, and end up drawing two two um, on a weekend where Burnley were also two 0 up, and they drew two two in the same weekend against. West Ham. West Ham. There we go. Thank you. Um, I, I was sure I was correct on that. Yeah, so so obviously they, they've responded, but then again, they, they've shown their defensive weaknesses and, and, the, and the mentality where um, they couldn't hold on to that 2-0 lead. And Solanke missed a penalty in that game as well. Um, what I've noticed about Sheffield United games of recent, I think back to the home games, especially against Arsenal and Aston Villa. Oh, the Newcastle one as well. They lost 8-0, of course. Bloody hell. Um, Brighton. Brighton. Yeah, I remember watching it in the box. Is that a lot of the goals came from either flank. And they and, and a lot a lot of times it would whether it be Saka or another winger from a different club would get in behind the fullbacks and pull a ball back and there'd be a little bit of a scramble and it'd be, it'd be a second shot that goes in or the first shot or the second phase. And it was all just a little bit messy. And it just feels as if that's something we should definitely target. It's definitely something they should have looked at, saying, well, why are we conceding so many goals down e either side of our flank? And if we've got bombing on uh, bombing on fullbacks like Robinson and Castagna or Tete, we could have a lot of joy. I could just imagine a scenario where Willian, I reckon they'll, they'll, they'll play a lot of men behind the ball as they usually do, but you could just imagine Willian and Robinson sort of exchanging underlapping and overlapping runs. And we just create that space by putting the ball on a plate to Robinson, a low driving ball in. Muniz could be there. Pereira could be there. Um, someone could be there at the back post in, in Alex Awobi or Harry Wilson. So I think Fulham are going to get a lot of joy in this game in those areas. I also think in the midfield, we'll probably dominate the ball. Paulinha, Sasha Lukic, maybe we'll get onto our 11. But we must remember the last time we went there was under Marco Silva and we lost 4-0. Yeah. However, we just won the league. And I think there was some big old paintballing party that had gone on maybe a couple of days before and the squad weren't quite, uh, they hadn't quite recovered from that. And I, I came out that ground, I, I couldn't care less. We'd been somewhat humiliated, but we were already champions. It was it was a great day out um, in Sheffield. Let's get on to an 11 then. Fulham, of course, last time out beating Spurs 3-0. And what would you change, if anything, now, there is one issue which you sent me yesterday, which had alarm bells ringing in my head. Calvin Bassey sent home early. Now, I don't know the full extent of it. We don't know the full extent of it. So what are your taking away? What are you going to take away from that putting yeah. into your, to, towards your 11? I mean, it was one Nigerian-based article. Obviously, that's where he's on international duty. So I do believe it, but it's been reported nowhere else. Right. And there's a lot of players that have come back from international duty with Knox or just because they're not playing. For example, Paulinia. Paulinia. Yeah, mm. perfect example, um, which is a great idea because why keep him out there? There's literally no point if he's not going to play in the next game. Um, Bassi being injured would really worry me because... Not, not for this game specifically, more long-term, because I think his partnership with Tosin is so good. And when they play together, our results have been fantastic overall. Um, for the time being, until we hear more, I'm going to presume that he's back and ready for the game because nothing else really to go off. Right. Um, in terms of the team that I play, Jack, I'm very hesitant to change much following that Spurs win if everyone is fit. And the reason that I say that is because even when the game was nil-nil, I think that was our best performance of the season. 
in terms mm-hmm. of the way that we press Spurs, the way that we were set up defensively, the chances that we were creating, the high quality chances that we were making it with ease. Um, and I would like to see that same eleven again. There's players that I wouldn't mind if they started. Tete's one of them. Harry Wilson's another. You know, right. there's a few that could easily get their way into that team. But the midfield three, as much as I was frustrated by Pereira, I like the link up that Castagne, Lukic, and Awobi have on the right hand side a lot. And they combined so well for the second goal and also the corner that led to the third goal against Tottenham. So that's a triangle I'd love to see again. And mm-hmm. for that reason, I'd have Pereira just behind Muniz. So I'd go unchanged from the team that beat Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Um, was really, really happy with that performance. And the bench was looking so strong as well. And um, if we, I'm going to sort of do everything in one, Jack, and then I'll go over to you. Yeah, yeah. If we play that team, I am honestly expecting a Fulham win and I'm expecting another 3 0. And this could age terribly. But I, I feel very confident with that team to beat anyone right now, let alone the team that is so poor defensively. Joe, I know this is insanely boring, but I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, honestly. Um, 3-0 win I had in my head as well and an unchanged team. This is no reason to change it, honestly. We were yeah. so, so good against Spurs. I, I'm willing to give Pereira the benefit of the doubt. It's not like Silva's going to drop him anyway. And um, and the players that we, we have on the bench that could come off the bench is perfectly good options. And even if we are in a bit of trouble or we need a goal, we've got some really good options. Um, And even if we need to settle the game down and calm it down a little bit, if it gets a little bit frantic, again, we have those options off the bench. Um, So then in that case, just going off that team, just to run it through, just to remind everyone that the 11 we played, it would be Leno, Castagna, uh, Tosin, Bassi, Robinson, Paulinia, Lukic, Awobi, Pereira, Willian, Rodrigo, Munez. That is fine by me. Beautiful. Um, I mean, Jack, there's a new, um, there's a new fantasy football game mode. So, oh. so I'm obviously a keen fantasy Premier League player. They've introduced something literally yesterday at the time okay. of filming that's called the Fantasy Premier League Challenge. And basically, from this coming week, there's going to be a different challenge every week. Um, so your team for one week will completely change the next and it's a one-off prize for each week. So it's quite nice for people that get bored of FPL, as I know a lot of people do. For this week, you get an unlimited budget and you're allowed up to five players from any team. And I've seen so many drafts where they've literally got five Fulham players in, which is one of the first times I've seen that ever. Wow. In terms of people really stocking up on Fulham players, I'm really hoping that we're not going to get um, a bit of a reality check. But I thought what Jack Collins said on the latest um, Thursday Club podcast was very, very true in terms of if we were to lose to Sheffield United, it's annoying, don't get me wrong, but it's fine long term. Oh, yeah. Like, I I love being in this position right now where there is no jeopardy at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to lose Sheffield United at all. I would actually be pretty annoyed because I always... You would be annoyed. Inevitably. (laughs) I would be fuming but <laughs> as a whole and as a club I'm sure they could see the bigger picture and it's been a great season I want to finish as high as we can now I want to finish above Chelsea I want to finish in the top half I want to get into Europe and we need to be winning this game and against Forest to do that absolutely um I just love it because you know I remember speaking to Sammy at the beginning of the season saying that the Everton game that we went to at the beginning of the season was the first game in such a long time where there was something on it there was actually some jeopardy behind it. Like, oh, we've got to win. We've got to get off to a good start because from from uh, from this stage of last season, we were basically in the same position, which actually leads me on to my next point. You know, Fulham are only one point worse off than we were at this stage last season. We still currently sit on 38. And remember last season, we were sat on 39 for such a long time. Ages, yeah. Until we beat... Uh, Everton, wasn't it? Everton on the 15th of April. So actually, we've got, we've got about three weeks to sort of get up to that tally. And I think we'll, we'll obviously be ahead of, of uh, 42 by the time we hit the 15th of April, hopefully. So incredibly encouraging, incredibly nice feeling. And it got me to the point where the other day I was like, you know what? I've got a bit of time. Let me just do a Fulham career mode on, on, on EAFC with this current Fulham crop. And I'm having a great time because all the players are just really good. And um, yeah, we've got a great squad and we're in a really good place. Be intrigued to see what Marco Silva has to say on Thursday or Friday. I'm guessing it'll be Thursday for a way in this press conference regarding Louisville and Morte. Um, yeah. 
might get some insight as to who replaces him. And just finally, I also say 3 0. Um, yeah, just for a score prediction. I know it's gonna be a shorter video today. A massive, massive thank you to those who tuned into the podcast um, and the Jack and Joe show on YouTube last week. We had such a fun time recording that video and we got some really nice feedback on it as well um, from people on the Telegram, from other Fulham fans as well. So, Joe, it was an absolute pleasure. And yet again, today, it's an absolute pleasure to film and, and talk Fulham. Yeah, and um, also massive fan of all the interaction we've been getting lately. Um, a lot of people... That was quite a discursive video in terms of our debates about players. And it's great to see everyone else's opinions mm. in the comments section afterwards. So, again, uh, to a lesser extent this time, but it'd be great to get your opinions on what the score is going to be at Sheffield United, what you would change, if anything, for the team um, and what you're expecting from the game. Um, and equally, you might as well drop in your Forest predictions as well, because we're not going to speak before then. Of course. Um, should, we, should we just quickly touch on, on how that could go? Yeah, and that, I think, that I mean, on paper, it's a tougher game. Um, right. Forest have been in a bad run of form and they haven't been playing well at all and I've seen a lot of their fans complaining about Nuno's style and how they haven't really been going they've been very very defensive now they've obviously been hit with the point deduction which I think Absolutely. will light a fire in them the same way it did with Everton and they've Absolutely. got two home games us being the second but before that Crystal Palace at home again like I said for Sheffield United they'll be looking at that going two mid-table teams at home that's where we need to be picking up points. So I'm expecting them to be really, really going for it. I think we're a far better side than them. We showed that at the Cottage, but we showed that consistently last year as well. And I think that we could really, really hurt them. Them being at home means I think it's going to be a tricky game. As of right now, I back us to beat them. I won't Same. put a prediction on it, but I, I expect us to beat them in a tighter game than I'm expecting at Sheffield United. Let's see, both predictions may be wrong, both may be right, but I'm expecting a tight game that Fulham will come out on top in. There is a scenario, Joe, where we're sitting here on Wednesday, next Wednesday, a week tomorrow, and we're on 44 points. And I reckon if we do beat Nottingham Forest, there is a scenario where we may be live for our Jack and Joe show in on the Wednesday evening. It could happen. You never know. Um we won't make any promises, but we we will do a reaction to that Forest game. Looking ahead to the next game, which would be um, Newcastle. Oh, the big one at home, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, yep. big, the big brothers shindig after that as well. That would be really good fun. What a day that should be. Um, and yeah, just finally. Um, oh, yes, that was the point. So we obviously recently hit 6,000 subscribers. Um, I don't like to toot our own horn too much. However, you know, we are an established Premier League team sitting in mid-table. I would argue this is the, probably the most prominent Fulham channel you get in the Fulham sphere when it comes to YouTube, for sure. And I think we can push. It took us quite a long time to get from five to six. And I think we could we could try and get to seven in, in a quicker time. So if there's anyone watching and you think, oh, actually, I've got a few pals or Fulham fans who might like this sort of content, just share with them and, and, and ask them to subscribe and watch the shows and, and watch the content. Because I have to say, that sit down with Dan Cook and Jack, Jay Collins about Rodrigo Munez was really good, really in-depth analysis. I know we don't sort of analyse the, the game and the players to the nth degree, but we have people on the team who can do that and they are really good at it. Dan Cook and Jack... Jay Collins especially. Um, and honestly, this is, you know, I've, I've been working for the mission now since 2017. And this is probably the most fun I've, I've ever had. It's so much fun to talk about a really good footballing team. And Joe, it's so much fun to talk with you. So thanks so much for being here. Cheers, Jack. Thanks everyone for watching. Let us know what you think the score will be in the next two games in the comments. And um, if you're going to Bramall Lane or the City Grounds, have a great time. Well played to two and a half thousand Fulham fans who are going up on Saturday. I will be one of them. And I'm also going to the city ground on Tuesday night as well. So a nice couple of away games in the space of a week. It's almost reminiscent of of times before. Um, times before. So very much looking forward to it. Hopefully, I think Fulham will win at least one of these games. I think we'll probably get maybe four points. Um, I can't quite put a prediction on that Forest game just yet, but it just depends what happens against Crystal Palace. Um, but yeah, you, you, actually, it's quite good that we're playing Forrest's second game because that sort of fire in the belly from the four points deduction will be against Crystal Palace. And True. it would be funny if Oliver Glasner's team uh, were to thwart them 
on at the city ground and then we <laughs> go and rub salt in the wounds um but joe thanks so much thanks everyone for watching um and we'll see you soon and a big old come on for them.